So congrats getting through our midterm critique. We are moving on in the course outline to the next unit, and that is doing an original spot illustration, so unit 11. So I'm just going to take you through this quickly. The things you're going to submit, you can see them up here. You're going to submit a sketch of an original spot illustration. And I say original, but this can be a mashup of lots of different things. You can even use compositing to make your sketch. But we're going to create our own vector line art. You can see this vector line art is very thin. This vector line art is a little bit thicker. And then, so the second thing you're going to turn in is your vector, clean black vector line art, like a coloring book. The next thing you do with it is you color it. Whether your coloring is very simple and flat, so this is called flat coloring <laughs> or flatting. And this is called duotone soft edged. And then this is duotone soft edge with some full spectrum. So there's lots of different ways we'll learn how to color behind the line art. But the step we need first is a sketch and then clean line art in whatever thickness you think works. So we're learning spot illustration, digital uh, inking, which is what it's called when you make very clean digital line art, and then digital coloring, which is what you call it when you color behind existing line art. Even if in this example, these are past student examples, the lines eventually turn into another color, right? So that's called a color hold, but it's still behind the lines. The lines just got turned to blue. You can even fill the lines with a gradation, and it's still digital coloring. And that's different than digital painting, which we'll do later. In the next assignment, this is assignment five, in assignment six, we're going to be designing type, some sort of text treatment, and putting it with our spot illustrations, or if you want, with your logo, you get to choose, and making posters. So we have a theme for this this semester. I try to change the theme up. Last year, we were doing Welcome to the Campus Coloring Books. This was an example I did several semesters ago of uh, Putin on the Ritz. And now it, now it seems kind of out, of out of taste because he really is kind of crunching up the Ukraine like a Ritz cracker. So it's not great. But you can make it fun. You can mash it up. I like to do kind of a mashup with my original ideas. So even though we have a Day of the Dead theme, I'm going to mash it up with Nico just because that's what we've been doing. But you can see clean line art, digital coloring. Clean line art, digital coloring. Sometimes it can get pretty abstract. We did one called um, Angry Elementals for an Earth Day show. And this was my example for that. So vomiting water. But with line art, you can figure out whatever you want. Notice that these are a little bit more detailed than logo design. They don't need to be as scalable. They don't need to be quite as versatile. You get to really show your own personality. OK, so here is the assignment, assignment five. Digital honors, assignment five for you is making your digital model just look as good as you can with coloring options. And so you're coloring on a 3D instead of on a 2D. So you can look through that. But the first thing we need to post is our sketch. Your sketch can be in ink. Your sketch can be on lined paper. It can be in pencil, like this one. So this is what I'm doing this semester. It's a little ambitious, but I've wanted to do it for a while. And once you have your sketch, go ahead and post it into Canvas. Because the next step is to turn it into clean vectors. right? And you can also sketch digitally. So that's why I definitely recommend a tablet for this. It gives you a lot more versatility. I'm going to show you a few different ways. So here's my sketch. The sketch does not need to be high resolution. To prove that to you, I'm just going to take a screen grab, because I, remember I want you to know how to do a targeted screen grab on a Mac, of this as my sketch. And I'll show you how to work on that. So whether you take a digital photo, whether you take a screen grab of something you're, you're digitally working with, this does not need to be high resolution. So there it is. So what's the next thing I need to do? I need to create a folder for it, an assignment five folder. So in that folder, I'm going to put my sketch. Right. Now, one option 
I'm going to go ahead and turn on my FaceTime camera so I can show you one way that you can approach this. I'm going to try to sh give you the advantages and disadvantages of all those ways. So you can print out that sketch, or maybe you did it in pencil on paper, right? And then what you can do is you can take tracing paper, and I have it here. I recommend Canson tracing vellum. It's a spun plastic. I have some here for you to use. It's expensive, but worth it, because you don't need much. You cut a little bit of it. You flap that over your image, like so. You see how that's like onion skinning. In fact, architects call the vellum they use, which is a little bit thinner and comes in rolls, they call it onion skin. Right? And then you just use an inking pen. I prefer a permanent black pen, so it can't run. I've used very fancy ones in the past. I like Faber-Castell brush pens. They're the, the best for the money. But this is not for a finished cartoon. This is just to get clean lines. So you can just use a Sharpie, and then you ink it, like so. Right? Then what you do is you take that, and you work with me. We go to the back of the room onto our scanner, and we scan this at a fairly high resolution. I scan at 600 pixels per inch when I'm scanning inked lines. So this is how to do it all physically, if you're more comfortable inking that way. And then this is the, the product. You just kind of adjust the brightness and contrast in Photoshop, and you get clean line art. But this is still a raster file. So once you have this, you still have to make it into a vector. So let me show you how that works. So let's see. Let's open up my sketch in Photoshop. Many of you are doing this, right? Not in Illustrator yet, in Photoshop. Hmm, why is it not showing up? When Photoshop is acting weird, it's good to quit it and restart it. Now, a spot illustration, think of it like a sticker design or t-shirt design. It should be free-floating. So notice it's not cut off on any one side. And if you do need to crop it, do it with a, a shape, with something that's engaging, not just with a horizontal or a vertical. My design is trying to be very dynamic, kind of like dynamic logo design. It's trying to move the eye through and keep you engaged. And yet, it's balanced on a fairly symmetrical shape. So it's playing with different design principles. And you can do the same. OK, there we go. So this image is only 72 pixels per inch. It's not very large. It's just a screen grab. So what can I do? Well, first thing, I can make a new layer on top of it. And I can take the original opacity down. But if I take the original opacity down to 50 to onion skin it, I'm going to have that annoying grid in the way. So what I like to do is to double click it, rename it so it's not a background layer anymore, and then add a background layer behind it and fill that with white. Just like we did for variations on our logo. You can fill it with white at this point, but later when we add color, we'll also do a background with gray, a background with black. OK, so now I have a 50% sketch on a white background. I'm going to lock these layers with the padlock. And then this is going to become my inking layer if I want to ink it digitally in Photoshop. I have a tablet. I'll show you what that looks like. We have them at the back of the room. If you're using your own computer, use any tablet you like. This is a simple like $60 one. I like wired tablets because I don't like replacing batteries. I don't like losing things. But 
what a tablet allows you to do is to use your brush tool. And this is really the first time we're using the brush tool. And you'll see in the brush drawer, there's also a pencil tool. You don't need that. There's also a color replacement tool. You don't need that. There's also a mixer brush tool, which is really cool, but we don't need it. All we need is the regular brush tool. So if it's not acting in the way you could expect, check that you have the right brush. You don't want the history brush, which is down here. You just want the regular old brush tool. And then check your settings at the top. Now, Photoshop has added a nice setting up at the top here, which is called smoothing. And Photop actually had this before Photoshop did, but now Photoshop's taking it from Photop, where you, like with the blob brush in Illustrator or the pencil in Illustrator, you can now smooth your strokes and you just set it as a percentage. But the default settings are here, 100% opacity, 100% flow, you want both of those, 10% smoothing. You can play with the smoothing. The other thing is you have to play with your brush size. So if you click on that drop down menu next to the the little shaped icon of the brush. We'll be making our own brushes later in digital painting. For here, we're just using very straightforward. You want to open up your general brushes and then look for a hard round pressure brush. This will be the most like using a Sharpie or a brush pen. And then you're going to set it to the hardness you want. I'm going to go ahead and do 90%. I don't want it to be too soft, but I also don't want it to be like every pixel is filled with black. And then you pick your size. So I'm at 17 pixels, but this is a pretty low resolution. It's only 72. So I'm going to immediately go up to, to image size and force my sketch up to print quality resolution. So you guys remember how to do this. You're going to resample, and you're going to put it at at least 8 by 10. So mine's going to be just a bit over 8 by 10, just the screen grab I did at a resolution of the lab resolution, which is 350. And even though we're going to vectorize this line art to be as clean as possible, this will give us nice definition. And now my brush seems a little small at only 17 pixels, because this is the biggest it can get. If I push really hard, it's going to fill that circle, right? But most of the time, it's going to be somewhere in between like an ink pen. So I always like to ink on its own layer. And then you just start. You can use your space bar as you're zoomed in to kind of move around. You can also use under the hand, there's a rotate view. So if you need like a nice angle for inking, I know this was an issue while we were doing logos sometimes. You can ink that way. Yeah, I'm messing it up. So. Find something comfortable, and then you just get started. Okay, so I'm going to show you the different smoothing. That's at 10% smoothing. Let's try 50%. Now, smoothing will, will kind of take a little processing as you do it, and it will slow it down a little bit. But especially on the newer computers, this is not going to be an issue. So figure out how much smoothing you want. Figure out what line weight you want. And then get into like a meditative headspace. And start inking your sketch. You don't need to match your your pencil or your sketch exactly. You can always add to it. I often do. It's fun to play with the ink. This is called digital inking. Now this is digital inking within Photoshop. And it can take a little while, but you can see you can get some very nice clean results. And because it's digitally produced, when we zoom in, you'll see that it's really, really even. And when we bring that into Illustrator, that's going to turn into a vector very easily. The computer is going to have no problem identifying these edges. So I'm just going to ink up a little bit more so I can show you what happens when we bring it into Illustrator. If you choose to digitally ink, this is one option you have. 
and I'm going to go a little faster than I need to because I'm going to.